Hello. Today I'm going to be discussing how to identify the research design in a peer-reviewed academic journal article. And as you can see, I have the uh, Crime Triangle article here that we've been using throughout the course as an example. And so I'm going to be going over the article and seeing if I can pick out the type of design that the researchers used. And uh, you'll be doing this yourself in phase two of the article critique project. So remember from the video on design that there are three types of research designs. There's experimental designs, quasi-experimental designs, and non-experimental designs. And um, in the prior video, I talked about in detail the differences between those design types. Um, so I'm not going to go over it again here. And if you don't remember, I highly suggest that you watch the video or uh, read Chapter 7 or read your notes for a refresher. But uh, basically, experiments are done to test the effect of an independent variable on a dependent variable. And experiments consist of pretests and post-tests, treatment and control groups, and random assignment of subjects to those treatment and control groups. A quasi-experiment has all the same features, so it does test the effect of an independent variable on a dependent variable. It has a treatment and control group, although it's called a comparison group and it has a pretest and a post-test, but it does not have random assignment. So the groups are selected in some other way that does not utilize random assignment. And then finally, the non-experimental design uh, measures independent dependent variables and tests for statistical correlations, but there's no treatment or control groups, um, and there is no uh, random assignment. Um, and they may only actually be a pretest. They may only take measures at one point in time. So just make sure that you understand the differences between those three designs. So that being said, uh, let's see if we can figure out what kind of design type was used in this article. So one way to, to tell is to read the abstract. A lot of times if an experiment or a quasi-experiment is done, the researchers will tell you this either in the abstract or in the title of the article, because experiments, especially in criminology and criminal justice, tend to be pretty rare. So a lot of times they'll want to promote the fact that they did an experiment. But it's not always that easy. In this article, um, in the abstract, it really doesn't say anything about the type of design. Um, really all we're told is, and I'll refer to this, uh, these last couple of sentences here, a questionnaire evaluated the effects of problem-oriented policing intervention and prevention strategies. The general findings suggest that the problem-oriented policing paradigm and related crime prevention strategies reduce the level of fear of crime in this community. So if you remember from the prior video I did on this article, I used these sentences to deduce what the independent and dependent variables were. So basically they're interested in testing the effect that this problem-oriented policing and these crime prevention strategies uh, have on the fear of crime in the community. And they used a survey to assess this, and they introduced problem-oriented policing. So some of this already helps us a little bit in deducing the type of design that they use, but it's not really very clear. So I'm going to go down to the methods section and see if I can figure out um, what type of design they used and see if I can find some more clues. So again, remember the methods is the meat and potatoes of the article because this tells us how they did the study. So let's see, the borough in which the data were collected has a higher proportion of elderly people. Okay, generally this age group has a higher fear about crime. Okay, good to know. Uh, neighborhood watch volunteers trained in survey and interview techniques administered surveys in two waves. One prior to community-oriented policing in 1996, pre-assessment, and one six months after it was implemented in 1998, post-assessment. Okay, in the pre-assessment, participants were unaware of the COP strategies local police were considering for both surveys. Respondents were told surveys were primarily used, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so there's some clues here. First of all, they talk about a pre-assessment, a survey being conducted before community-oriented policing in 1996, and then they talk about one being done six months after it was implemented in 1998, and that this was the post-assessment. So this is sounding like an experiment because we have a pretest and a post-test, and we have the pretest prior to the implementation of the independent variable, which is community-oriented policing, 
and then one being done after the independent variable has already been introduced. So again, this is really sounding like an experiment because we have our pretest and post-test and we have our independent variable, which we know is uh, the community-oriented policing program. But let's see if we can deduce any more. Each wave consists, oh, e sorry, each wave involves surveys of two random samples of people. The first sample of each wave consists of community members who live in the immediate vicinity of a local park. Wave 1, total sample 124. Wave 2, total sample 125. An elderly apartment complex, 110 residents, and about 48 surrounding homes, mostly owned and occupied by non-elderly individuals, dominate this area around the park. Okay, so it sounds like they have two random samples of people. And the first sample is people that live in the immediate vicinity of the park. Now this makes sense because if you read the study, it talks about the reason they did the study was because there were a number of crime problems in this local park. So they were trying to do community policing and problem-oriented policing to determine if it would reduce the amount of crime and reduce the levels of fear of people in the community near the park. So uh, it sounds like this is basically setting up a, a treatment and a control or comparison group. So we'll go down a little bit. The second wave, uh, sample in each wave focuses on people who live in the general borough population and have access to the park but do not live in its immediate vicinity. Okay. So since this is a much broader base, the intent was to sample 10% of the total borough population, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so the second group is people that um, live in that general borough and have access to the park, but do not live in its immediate vicinity. So this sounds very much like a comparison group or a control group. Um, whereas the target group or the um, treatment group that they're interested in more is that group that's closer to the park. So already this is sounding like a, uh, uh, an experiment of some type. So let's just go down and see if we can find any more clues. So they talk about the research instrument and the results. Uh, so here table two. So this is the fear of crime in the target and control groups. So again, you can see that this is clearly a two group comparison, the target group and the control groups. And so they're, uh, they're contrasting perceptions across these two groups and also across there are two waves of surveys. So remember, wave one was administered prior to doing community-oriented policing, and wave two was administered after they did community-oriented policing. So, and they're comparing uh, the perceptions of fear of crime across these two groups. So this really tells us that this is uh, some type of an experimental design um, where they had a pre-assessment at wave one, a post-assessment at wave two, and they're contrasting both these groups' opinions at, at two times, at, at wave one and wave two, and also they're contrasting the opinions of folks in both groups. You can see, here's how they assess fear of crime. Do I feel safe in the park during the day? Do I feel safe in the park during the night? Feel safe due to crime prevention efforts. So they're measuring the dependent variable here, fear of crime, at wave one, which was prior to implementing community-oriented policing, and wave two, after community-oriented policing was implemented. And they're doing this across both groups. Our target group, which is folks living closer to the park, and our control group, which is people living away from the park. And they're comparing to see if there's statistically significant differences in the opinions of folks, you know, both uh, at wave one and two, and also among the two groups. So from all of this, we can deduce that this was uh, basically some type of an experimental design because we have a pretest, a post-test, we have the introduction of our independent variable, which was community-oriented policing, 
and we have a, a two group comparison, a target group and a control group. Now, what I am going to tell you is that they did not utilize random assignment here because basically they selected specifically this target group of folks living near the park and then they selected the control group which was folks living in the general borough. So there's not random assignment. These groups were already created just by the fact that they lived in the vicinity of the park or not. So these groups were selected purposefully based on their geographic location. So because there was no random assignment, we know automatically that this was a quasi-experiment. Okay, um, so basically, again, just to summarize, we have a study here looking at the effect of problem-oriented policing and community-oriented policing on park crime and of the fear of crime in the community. We have a pre-assessment being conducted prior to doing community-oriented policing, and we have a post-assessment being done after community-oriented policing was already implemented. And the survey was done of people that lived in the target group or the treatment group, let's say, folks living near the park and a control group of folks that lived away from the park. And random assignment was not utilized, so we know it was a quasi-experiment. So that about sums it up. Um, if you have any questions about this, uh, please shoot me an email and I would be happy to address them.